Coverage of the ANZ Championship is brought to you by ANZ. Sport for round one of the ANZ champs. It is the runners up of last year, the Mystics up against the Central Pulse. And if you're a Pulse fan, you may take some confidence in the fact that so far it has been a day of upsets in the, in the uh, ANZ champs, obviously, with the Firebirds going down to the Vixens. Not too many people would have picked that one, Catherine. Absolutely no one. But what that tells you, just because you play in a grand final one year doesn't mean you have a right to victory the next. It's been nine months since the competition ended last year, so a lot has happened in between seasons and the Pulse is a different lineup so they will certainly challenge the Mystics and have fed a lot from what the Vixens have done earlier the, on today. For the Pulse to win today though their shooters have to gel and they have to combine well early. It's a very potent shooting circle but not a really mobile one so what they'll need to do is work together so that they confuse the defenders. If they can do that then it'll be hard going for the Mystics defenders. Let's take a look at the team that shall we for the Pulse and who they'll take out on court for the starting lineup. A very different Pulse lineup this year. Five changes to the team. Caitlin Thwaites and Paula Griffin. A very strong shooting circle. The midcourt Millie Lease has been there before. Their big recruit Jolene Henry. The team will expect big things from her and Milner Olsen in at wing attack and a solid defense Defensive circle, Katrina Grant, the captain, partnered by Selby Rickett. And on the bench, there are a number of options. Katarina Cooper, word has it, is she's injured and she won't be taking part in this game. But Gutwell and Smith are names that you will recognise. Someone who is standing by, who is at the helm of this team for the very first time, is their coach, Robin Broughton. Well, Robbie, an exciting new start for you. What are we going to see from the Pulse tonight that underlines the fact that they are now a team coached by you? Well, that's hard to say, but, you know, I've tried to give them ownership of their team and, and um, a belief in themselves and a passion and a desire and, a, and, and you know, own what what's happening out there. So let's just hope the big match temperament comes out there tonight. Katarina Cooper not on the, on the bench tonight. How bad is her injury? It's more precautionary for us. She's um, a very um, good player and an up-and-coming and um, we would like, well, I would like her to have... Um, full recovery so we've got it for the rest of the season but we've got good players out there so it was worth doing now thanks robin robin broughton trying to install a big match temperament into her side to do that she'll rely heavily on someone who's tough talented and very competitive yeah she's a leader she doesn't like to lose and this is a big game for her lavina to play against your old side you will feel as though you've got a lot to prove so she'll be feeling the pressure don't you worry about that one would imagine that the mystic side may be a little bit more predictable, though, than the Pulse. Let's take a look at this lineup for round one of the ANZ champs. Yes, only three changes in the off-season. A formidable shooting duo in Maria Tutai and Catherine Latu, as good as they come. And in the midcourt, Temapara George in her final season this year. Jay Clark, their import, and Grace Rasmussen back from a serious knee injury. And there we go in the defensive circle. Kayla Cullen and Rachel Rasmussen gets a nod ahead of Scarlett, who we hear is slightly injured. And they've got some options on the bench. Anna Scala is one of those players. Uh, Portia Woodman is there. And Charlotte Kite, their recruit from the Tactics. And their coach, who made big inroads last year, is Debbie Fuller. And she's standing by with Jenny Woods. Well, Debbie, after your success last year, you're a marked side now. How does that change your approach? Our approach this year has definitely been about going to the next level. We've increased a lot of areas of our conditioning program, so we'll see if it's all panning out when we get out there tonight. Anna Scarlett, not in your starting seven. Are we likely to see her tonight? We may do. We'll see how she goes. Thanks, Debbie. Coming up after the break, it's no April Fool's joke. We are here to beat last year's grand finalists. So much talk about the Pulse, how they're new, they're improved, 
but have they improved enough to beat this Mystic side? Look, they will think so. They've got a familiar lineup, which is so different to the previous Pulse teams that have hit the court. They've come out here with a lot of players who have experience, who've been there before, the likes of Henry and Griffin, and they'll be pulling their team along, saying, look, we've just seen the Vixens upset the Firebirds. Nobody would have tipped that. We can do it here tonight. So I expect that they'll have big expectations of themselves. And what a match-up that is. Katrina Grant against Latu. We're away. The Northern Mystics versus the Central Pulse. Version 2012. It's a familiar offload from two Tair to Latu. We'll see a lot of that tonight. That's the sort of start Debbie Fuller would have wanted. Jolene Henry, she'll be feeling the pressure up against her old side. She want to put in a big game for the Pulse. Mona Olsen sending that back. But an offside call. So Paula Griffin will have the free pass. Good defensive start here by Rasmussen, who's got the night ahead of Scarlett, who's out with a slight calf injury. We're not sure if we'll see her this evening or not. Caitlin Thwaites offloading. Pulse season underway, courtesy of Paula Griffin. <laughs> Tito yeah, off balance, gets away with it. Here's the first look at Jade Clark, the England captain, at wing defence this evening. She can play anywhere in the midcourt. This is a great acquisition for the Mystics, a solid play, and she's only going to get better by playing in this competition week in, week out. And that's a lovely, relaxed, typical Tito shot. And a little nod from Debbie Fuller, and of course, sitting next to Debbie Fuller tonight, Gail Parata, new assistant coach for the Mystics. And turnover ball, and interestingly enough, was the assistant coach for the Pulse. Always helps to have inside information. And that was good work from Selby Rickett. Contact, wing defence, penalty pass. Now the Pulse working their way down court. Good movement so far in the circle from Waits and Griffin, working off each other. Great work, Selby Rickett. Good start for her new side. It could be a formidable defensive duo, that one with Katrina Grant, her captain. Not able to stop that pass. Or that woman, Kat Latu. Terrific feed by Rasmussen. She'll be relishing being out there again after a serious knee injury last year. Kept her out for at least half the season. And there's her older sister, Rachel Rasmussen, at goal keep for the Mystics. Lorna Olsen again choosing to go back, just settle things down. Yeah, they're struggling to penetrate when there's not much movement inside that circle. Drakes and Griffin need to keep mobile. Got a fine shooting start by both sides. The Pulse certainly don't look overawed by this. They're ready for the challenge. With all their new recruits, they'll be feeling confident and fresh. And it's one thing I noticed, Catherine, at the pre-season tournament. The Pulse oozed confidence. Had a good win over the Melbourne Vixens. Mona Olsen doing a lot of work already. She gets a lot of the ball. She just needs to control herself at time. Her execution can be a little bit wayward. Great, such a powerhouse down the back. Reads the game very well. Tutea looking around, finding Clark on the transverse. Nice one, too. Oh, here's an opportunity for the Central Pulse. They'll use Henry a lot in that attacking role, Jenny. That's what she's renowned for, so Rasmussen will have to stay tight. Kayla Cullen called out well out of the circle. Pulse not able to make the most of that opportunity. Pulse hit the front, sent a pass to come. 
Yeah, the game reasonably flat at the moment. Both teams just feeling their way. You see a lot of nerves. Just too much on that ball from Griffin. That's something that Broughton's talked about, is to try and get rid of those silly errors that the Pulse are renowned for. There's no pressure on that pass. Off balance, George. Or Rasmussen, rather, but it works for the Mystics. Back on level pegging. Not bad shooting stats at the moment. Five from five for both sides. They're so familiar with each other now, Tute and Latu. Just know when to pop out. They use each other a lot. She looked a bit anxious on that shot to Kat Latu. Yeah, it was worth a go, just couldn't control it. Rasmussen. Hold, 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 hold. Great job. has a look in, finds Latu on the edge. Acting as another feeder too to Taya. Shelby Rickett letting her do a lot of work outside the circle. Just the Northern Mystics determined to go one better than they did last year. They made the grand final, but were really heavily beaten by the Queens and Firebirds. Yeah, again, forced to go back. But the good thing for the Pulse is they're keeping possession. And that's tiring as a defender too. The Mystics defenders are all over the Pulse, but they keep penetrating and eventually they score. So it does wear you down after a while. A shoot under the post. <laughs> First miss of the game. Got good rebounding target, so the Poles with that height in there, Thwaites and Griffin. So nothing between these two teams. Halfway mark, first quarter, eight all. Again, Tute left out there to do the work. More focused on Latu in the circle, the Poles defenders. Lati, that big hand up saying, I want it. She gets it. A great lure by Tutaye to draw the defender away from Latu. Oh, Millie Lee's in all kinds of trouble. She gets it away. How's that for vision? Oh, unlucky there. Foot on the line. And that's the Jolene Henry trademark. Just didn't work for them on that occasion. They're going to try again here. Henry gets it back. Oh, Griffin head down, wasn't looking. It's one thing you're told to keep your eye on the ball at all times. Nothing worse when you release the ball and your teammates not looking. Not a chance for the pass. Yeah, it's settling in nicely, Griffin and Waits, and strong challenge there by Griffin. She deserves that. Finished the season really well, did Paula Griffin for the steal last year. So like she's continuing on with that good form. And I guess she has a few points to prove, Paula Griffin. Picked up as a young player, as a star of the future. Hasn't quite delivered on that, but she is still pretty young. So a great opportunity with this pulse side. Yeah, that was terrific defence by the Pulse. They deserved that ball, playing the space and then coming into the action when required. Katrina Grant, captain of the Pulse. Now 
to slowing things down. Changing it up to the post. Waits doing some work outside the circle, leaving Griffin one on one. Slight nudge under the ball from Rasmussen, but she'll take it. Violent contact, goal attack. Contact, goal attack, penalty pass. The quick hands from Grant, but she's called. <laughs> Good challenge there by Grant. Came off to Tyre in the end. Here they go again the pulse. Yeah, good work. Tema Para Georgia now for her defence. And making very sure oh, that Bronwyn Meek knew exactly whose hand it had come off. Always helpful. It's been around long enough to know what game to play. Good. Just get a feeling that people are just wasting some of the opportunities that are coming their way at the moment. And the Mystics are just slowly going about their business. Henry looks again, that's the one that's on. It's actually really good play, Henry, because Rasmussen is known to come out looking for ball. So Henry's obviously aware of that, having been a former teammate off Rasmussen. He's just wanting to be a bit closer. Incredible shooting yet to miss a shot, Mystics. Interesting reading, Tayez stood back and taken a look at her play over the off-season and acknowledged that sometimes she goes missing in some games. Goes to Samoa was the term. Her parents told her that. Sometimes you look like you head off to Samoa in the middle of the game. OK, Mum. <laughs> Clark looks around. Strong challenge from Milner Olsen. Clark in her first game for the Mystics. Just nice and sit steady today. She will build, no doubt. <laughs> Tutea yeah, not wanting that one. Yeah, they're combining really well, Selby Rickett and Grant. They're switching when required. Yep. Making life difficult for Tutay and Latu. Sit where you are. Sit where she is, please. Sit where she is. Sit where the keeper is. Latu pushes that lead out to two. Biggest lead of the match so far. That's how tight it's been. You know, the concerning thing for the Poles is the Mystics don't seem as though they're extending themselves, yet they're leading by two. Make that three. Okay, Parata looks a little bit more relieved. Yeah. Lovely feed from Milner Olsen. Yeah, excellent vision, George. Grant, look, went hunting. George knew it. Good release. The holding wing, can we pass? Again, good rebound from Griffin, but out of court. So she missed the shot, but she's certainly going in for those rebounds. It was interesting. Last year, the Pulse were fourth in terms of the number of attempts in the competition, Jenny. So it tells us that they get lots of ball. It's just a matter of keeping the shooting percentages up. And, of course, that's the idea, I guess, by bringing Paula Griffin into the side. She'll boost those numbers. Contact goal defence. In front. A strong push at the end of this first quarter by the Northern Mystics. 
Well, there's a, they're a quality side, there's no doubt about that. They'll expect, be expecting to go one step further this year. They've certainly got the cattle. the shooters and that's what you need in this game five goal the difference and they've scored the last three and with play like that the pulse are not going to make inroads into this lead yeah, at least just trying to hold up knowing that time's almost up she doesn't want the mystics to score another goal and there in fact is the whistle for quarter time so it was tight but certainly a strong finish by the northern mystics they lead the central pulse 16 11. You need to get free without somebody sitting up in front of you. So we're going to have to have quick full outlet, one of you up short, one of you back, you for a back up. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, But set up that pause, it's coming, OK? It's going to set the ball up. Do her play when she goes to go on attack. Restrict rather than run from player to player. They just restrict your own. Right? All right, let's start with... Hey, uh, if you're switching, you just a good speed coming in so and you I'm might pick up some of those. You can see them, can't you? Come in on the inside. It's come up to the line. Put your hands together. Robbie Broughton talking to her defensive players as we await the resumption of this game. A pretty tight first quarter, Catherine, 16-11, but it was much tighter for a lot of it, wasn't it? Yeah, but you look at the attempts, 15-16, to 16, so it's all down to goal shooting percentage. The Mystics girls are on fire at 100%, not quite up there for the pulse. Uh, rebounds, one zip, so they're pretty close there. No intercepts or deflections for the pulse, so that's what Robin Broughton said to her players. You can see them have a go and hunt and turn the ball over for your side. And there is the shooting percentages. Griffin will want to lift. She's getting enough of the ball. And Thwaites, six from seven. But you can't question the efforts of Latu and Tutair. 16 from 16. It's amazing. Just what you would expect from a couple of silver ferns. I should tell you, those of you in or around Invercargill looking for tickets for tomorrow's Night Steel versus Magic game, go to our Facebook page and you can be in with a chance to win a couple. So Jolene Henry, what a night for her. Back in what was her home stadium but her side trailing at the moment. Northern Mystics underway in the second quarter. They lead the pole 16-11. They just had a lapse toward the end of that last quarter. The Mystics scored the last three goals, so you can't afford to do that against a quality side like the Mystics because they'll certainly punish you. A pretty relaxed effort from the two of them there. Katrina Grant to get her side going. Patient build up from the pulse. Yeah, it's nice patience just waiting for the opening. And it's there, offered by Thwaites. She's so good, she just lunges out at the last minute. She reads the game very well, does Caitlin Thwaites. Yep, making a bit of room for herself. So one peg back for the pulse. Jolene Henry at 29, the oldest player in this pulse team. Good for the future. In the power George, I'd like to be 29 again, I'm sure. Yes, well, she's the oldest player in the Mystics, but she's a little bit older than 29. Oh, yes, oh, what a player she is, though. So, good start for the Central Pulse. Clark and George combining. They have improved in this area, the pulse. They're slowing the opposition down. It's something that they really lacked last year, but Broughton's obviously worked on that. It's been reasonably effective tonight. So another turnover going the way of the pulse. Some of the timing is out for the pulse players, though. They're getting bogged down here, aren't they? Yeah, the leads are coming too early. They're getting caught up high. Milner, Olsen, the likes of Griffin. And then they're stuck crowding the area. Just need to hold back a bit. Lovely feed from Liz. Yeah, learn from that lady in terms of timing. Waits gets it right a lot of the time. So this is three in a row for the central pulse. With the chance for another. Oh, 
Yes, they've certainly silenced the crowd as this mystic, this pulse side. They've scored the last three and you a pin drop at the moment. Oh, good defensive effort there to Tayer, but I think she thought if she cantered down court without looking, she might get the ball. The umpires noticed. Amazing what you think you can get away with as a player. <laughs> A heavy, big bandage on the thigh of Paula Griffin. This is one area that the Mystics let themselves down in. It happened in the grand final. They just go missing for a little while. And, it's, you know, the pulse are on a roll here at the moment. Oh, and Henry knew she was off balance, had to release that ball, but they've got away with it. Lucky. So Jolene Henry really yep. steering the ship for this pulse side at the moment. Two on one in the circle should be easy. Kayla Cullen, what a massive year she had last year. Goal defence for the Mystics. Debbie Fulham not looking quite as pleased as she was a few moments ago. 16 all. Such a and different position, sorry, Jenny, for the Mystics to be in. Usually they're the underachievers and people don't expect a lot, but now things have changed. What, 12 months makes a lot of difference. People expect big things from this Mystic side. Argy bargy between Cullen and Griffin. Last six to the pulse. This is about when your coach tells you to pull a timeout to regroup. Well, we've got four minutes gone in the second quarter, and the Mystics haven't scored. And they still haven't. That's a shocker from Lato. She's eyeballing someone. I'm not sure who. Oh, this is amazing. Millie Lees hits the deck. Oh, little hand from La too, but it was an illegal one. We are seeing signs of the new pulse because previously, if they were down by four or five goals against the Mystics, they would have capitulated. But obviously, Broughton has instilled some self-belief and they know they've got the talent out there to mix it with the best. Oh, well covered on the edge of the circle by George and Cullen. Reached the benefit. Boy, the Mystics needed that. Rachel Rasmussen racking them up from the back. Five minutes now without a goal. Ah, too so good at rebounding. Finds herself in a strong position. That's the first miss for Tutayer, but at least the Mystics get on the board in the second quarter. Oh, good speed from Kayla Cullen. Challenge here now for the Pulses to keep it together after such a strong run. Good doing a lot of work outside the circle. Perfect feed. Mystics back in front. What a beautiful roll from Lasu. Tutaya calls the contact. She put in a strong drive into the circle. Don't they turn it around so quickly? Off weights was free, but Griffin not able to get it away. Contact, bit static there, the pulse. You hear them say, keep moving. Contact, Strong challenge from Cullen. The pulse stay in touch. Again, the defenders dropping back into the circle. It's been working for them. Lovely roll there, Latu. Such a strong and big target. Had to come around. Just snatches that ball away from the reach of Selby Rickett. As if to say, how dare you even contemplate taking it? He's got good skills, Latu. Wing defense. Wing. 
Quake's doing the same down the other end. Certainly the big target down there. 12 from 13. Oh, Jay Clark. On the move as she threw that. Watch this from the England captain. She'd be enjoying that. She's been wanting to play in this competition for a long time since her cameo appearance a couple of years ago for the Magic when Tita Scholes was injured. Fine player. Both out. Oh, this game, like a rubber band, back to just a one goal difference. Yeah, good challenge, Lise. Two tries there. Oh, lovely pass. Two tries, yeah. That was sneaky. Got a room there for Thwaites. It's almost the show of the shooters. Whichever shooter can be nullified, that's the team that will start to go ahead. Thwaites and Latu certainly on song. Lily Lee's went hunting. Yeah, that feed was just too soft. Well read, Selby Rickett, and they're away. Pulse need to reward efforts like that. Oh, easy as a light. Oceans of room for Caitlin Thwaites. Brilliant work. And that's where it started. Tuangareo Selby Rickett flying high. 22 all. Oh, could at least get that straight between Clark and George. Oh, Kayla Cullen, a little piece of magic. Yeah, strong to the ball was Cullen. Oh, <laughs> not even looking at the goalpost. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll give it to my mate. And she manages a smile too, too, too yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, she knew. Replay ball, Tuta here. No one coming to the ball for the pulse. <laughs> was free. It's not always a direct path to goal for the Poles, but they managed to get it in there. Yes. 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 Get another crack at this. Both players out. Pulse. 23 apiece. Less than five minutes in this second quarter. Yeah, they're moving nicely, Griffin and Thwaites. Being well fed by their mid-quarters. Pulse back in front. Tutea out of the circle, coming in now. Tutea happy to offload to her partner, only put up a couple of shots in this quarter. Looks like Clark has called a timeout. And 24 all, oh, Catherine. I mean, we, we knew that, you know, the Pulse were going to be better, but, gee, I think they will be impressing a few people tonight. Well, they scored 13 goals, and there's still almost four minutes to go, so it's a really good attacking effort by the Pulse. But I think that that's what they expect of themselves this year. They know that they will challenge teams. There are teams they would have targeted that they will beat on a regular basis, and there are others that they think they can cause upsets against. And I think the Mystics would be one of those sides, and that would be here tonight. Yeah, so now they're going that way. Take 
she had the front foot because she's coming around. She's just coming around. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you pull her right out, then the feet on into me. So Mystics return to the court after that time out. Just under four minutes remaining in this first half. You wonder what goes through the mind of the coaches. Fuller's got Scarlett on the bench. He's got a niggly calf. The Pulse have scored 13 goals already in this quarter. And there's the change. Charlotte Kite on at wing defence for the Northern Mystics. Jade Clark has gone to the bench. You can just see Charlotte Kite on the edge of the circle. There's Clark now taking a rest. Charlotte Kite there with the wing defence bib on in the Mystics colours. Moving north from the Canterbury Tactics. Certainly a, a good person to have as a backup, covers a number of positions, and that means you don't have to disrupt many areas. Oh, to cut. Easy peasy for Jolene Henry. She's always been an exciting player, Charlotte. Of course, we're used to seeing her at goal keep, and I think most people sort of feel perhaps she's just lacking a few centimetres. Yeah, she's certainly better suited to the wing defence position. They're getting pretty tall in the shooting circle these days. She's a busy player, but reads the play very well, so watch for her coming out and trying to pick up some ball for the Pulse. Right uh, for the Mystics. And that's nicely worked by the Pulse. So they push out to a two-goal lead late in the second quarter. And this is what the Mystics were able to do in the first quarter. A little bit of pad of tennis from Griffin, but they control it. Cullen had the better position. Just little things like that the Pulse need to be aware of. Just landing the shots when required. And a lovely feed and well held by Latu. Move to the space at the last minute. And how quickly the Mystics strike back. Yeah, good vision. Grant was coming out. Easy as you like. They're a fast scoring side, the Mystics. All locked up. A minute and a half remaining in this first half. Oh, Thwaites heavily to the ground. Good take by Thwaites. The ball really wasn't where it should have been, but she went to the ball. The guys here of Rachel Rasmussen. Oh, another important shot, Pulse. Oh, those are the ones that really have to fall. They might have got away with it. Henry looks down. Certainly getting enough chances, the Pulse. Picking out lots of ball now. Grace Rasmussen called that time. Pulse back in front. Mystics will have the centre pass. 20 seconds remaining. Oh, easy ball to Tayer finding Latu. And now it'll be the Pulse who want to move quickly. Plenty of time. They, she'll want to put it up. I uh, don't think no. quite realised just how close it was to the end of the first half. But what a half we've had. Nothing between these two teams. 27 all. So just an outstanding first half. Let's go down to Lavina Good. Kath, a great start from the Mystics. What happened in the second quarter? I think we got a little bit complacent, and the Pulse are a really good team, but what you see on the scoreboard is what we're doing to ourselves, so we need to sort that out real quick. Kayla Cullen standing up, no Anna Scarlett. 
Yeah, I understand Scarlett turned us out for a little bit. I think Kayla's doing a really good job. She just needs to be a little bit tighter. The Pulse scored the first six in that second quarter. At some stage, do you think you underestimated their ability? Um, no, I think they're well more than capable of doing that. They just gave us a bit of a fright and we didn't react fast enough, so we need to sort that out now. Just quickly, to win this match, what do the Mystics need to do? We just need to catch and pass like we did in the first quarter and do it properly. Forward to the second half. Oh, thank you. Candid comments there from Kat Latu. There's the story. Interesting matchup, 16-11 and then 11-16 the other way. But it is all tied up here at the Trust Stadium Arena. 27 all at halftime. Time in this round one clash between the Mystics and the Pulse, and the fans are in for an absolute cracker. Two quarters of Nepal, and right now it is locked up at 27 all. After the first quarter, the Pulse were trailing 11 to 16, but they seem to gain intensity into the second half. And Robin Broughton said, Any team that underestimates the Pulse, let it be at their own peril. And we now see why, Catherine. Oh, that's certainly an inspired side, and they've got players like Jolene Henry and Katrina Grant. They're really dogged players, and they know that this is a different Pulse side and even when the Mystics started to move away you knew that there was some sort of determination there and as a result it's 27 apiece and we've certainly got a game on our hands. Has there been a standout player, all standout players from the Pulse to you so far this evening? I think Caitlin Thwaites is leading the way. Um, she's certainly the target down there. Griffin's acting as a nice foil but Thwaites is certainly the go-to girl. We can tell you the stars are out this evening for the ANZ champs. Jenny Woods is standing by with Frankie Adams. Well, I'm here with Frankie Adams, better known to most of us as Ula in Shortland Street. This is a bit different to the shorty set, I understand. Yeah, it's a lot um, It's a lot louder, better, better vibe, I guess. <laughs> and I understand you've got something of a connection to the Mystic side. Yeah, I've come to support my friend Kayla. She plays goal defence, and uh, we used to play together in school, so it's really cool to see her play professionally now. And what about, how do you think they're going tonight? Um, I, I would have to say the Mystics are going to win. And that's not just because I'm from Auckland, but um, yeah. Mystics. And when you played, what position were you? Um, I changed a lot. I went from shooter to defence to midi, so I guess everywhere. <laughs> and did you tell, could you tell back then how good Kayla Cullen was going to be? Yes, she was always the star of the show, always. <laughs> and okay, so how do you think this is going to play out? Mystics. By how much? Uh, pretty close, maybe maybe by three. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks very much, Frankie. Thank you. Frankie Adams there, a versatile player, a little like Kayla Cullen, who is playing superbly this evening. She had to step up and play good because there is no Anna Scarlett to the Mystics. And in the second half, they may pay for not having the Silver Firm defender. Yeah, look, it's interesting. They look a little bit complacent, the Mystics, and that generally happens when a team's come off a successful season. Just ask the Firebirds who lost to the Vixens earlier tonight. Um, but the test for the Mystics now will be, I'm sure they'll get a roasting at halftime, see how they come out after the break. Really impressed with the Pulse long ball this evening. It's something they didn't have last year in the Anglo Champs. No, they certainly look like a different makeup all round. And this ball, they've got the confidence. Henry's probably the one that puts in most long ball, but the others are following suit. And Caitlin Thwaites, we know she's a good player, but last year she was probably not receiving the ball that was required. But this year she's getting good ball and she's got strong hands. As a result, the Pulse are really pushing the Mystics. Were you surprised that Jay Clark was benched at one stage? I mean, there's been so much touted about the English captain that she would perhaps play the whole match. One quarter, next time, find her on the bench. Yeah, Debbie Fuller is trying to change things up and just trying to tell her players, if you're taken off, don't drop your head. But, you know, she's a good player and she'll be back. For the Mystics this year, it's not just about synergy with Catherine Latu and also Maria Tutayer. They may shoot well, but it takes more than that. Yeah, look, Latu's playing a solid game, and what the Pulse defenders are doing, they're realising Latu is dominating, so they're dropping back on here and putting pressure on Tutaya, who hasn't found herself in the game as much as she would like. It is 27 all in round one of the ANZ Champs. It is the runners-up of last year, the Mystics taking on the Pulse. What a match we have in store for you. Stick around for the second half. Time at the Trust Stadium Arena in Auckland. It is 27 all between the Central Pulse and the Northern Mystics. Captain, this is tight. Yeah, very tight. It's an impressive quarter by the Pulse, winning that one 16-11, so it was a complete turnaround. In that first quarter, they didn't have any intercepts or deflections. They are now, in fact, 
uh, ahead of the Mystics, four intercepts and ten deflections in that quarter. So they obviously got a lot of ball. And shooting-wise, Caitlin Thwaites is leading the way. She's certainly had a strong quarter. And Griffin putting out lots of shots would just like her accuracy to increase a little bit. But they are well and truly in this game, Jenny. And go to our Facebook page, Sky Sport Netball, if you're interested in winning yourself some tickets to tomorrow night's match in Invercargill between the Magic and the Steel. That'll be a goodie. Second half underway, Northern Mystics against the Central Pulse, 27 all and straight away, great pressure by the Pulse. Interesting it's changes too for the Pulse, Whiffen into centre and Olsen into wing attack, which is interesting considering they've just come off a 16-11 quarter. Let's go sideline now to Mystics coach Debbie Fuller. Debbie, you made that change at wing defence. Tell us about that. Uh, they, the second phase of the centre pass was really strong and they were getting to the circle edge with limited pressure, so that's why we uh, moved Charlotte Kite in there to see what she, if she can contain their wing attack. What about the shooting? How, what instruction have you given your team? Only 11 goals in that second quarter, Debbie. Yeah, turn and shoot. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, no, get the ball in. We've got people that can put it away, but um, we just need to turn and shoot and retain and be consistent with our position. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. And here is the change for the Pulse. Dea Whiffen, better known to many as Dea Pritchard, in at centre. Millie Lees moving to wing attack. And there she is, and Milna Olsen hitting the bench. Gave birth in December, did Whiffen. It's not a bad turnaround. And there's several other players having this championship. Incredible, really. And Whiffen, patient, not high enough. So the Central Pulse take a two-goal lead. That will please Robbie Broughton. Let's go to Robin now on the sideline. Robin, you've made that change at centre with, Lees, uh, with Millie Lees. What's the thinking there? Just a bit of... Probably looking for a bit more height and you know, just a change of legs, you know, freshen up down there and just see if we can just get that ball fed in neatly and tidily. What areas are you most pleased about, Robin? It's certainly a different set pulse than we've seen before. Um... I just, there's a long way to go with just being patient with what we do and being really sure of our passes and just all the basic things that are just really important. They're fine, they're actually, um, oh, that was a step. And just quickly, <laughs> Robin, how are you finding it being at the helm of a new side after I'm so many years? I'm loving it, I'm loving it. I truly am. It, it's, it's, um, it, they're really nice girls and, and they work hard and, um, and I'm enjoying Wellington. I miss... Southland, of course, because it's my home, but um, on the other hand, it's a change. Okay, thanks, Robin. Trendsetter Robin Broughton, first coach within the ANZ Championship to lead two different sides. Such a calm voice, isn't she, Robin? <laughs> Nothing seems to phase her. She's calm, but then sometimes you see those fingernails taking a hammer in. Calm on the outside. Jolene Henry. What's oh, but in fact, no, the, play, the whistle has gone. I think Maria Tutaia was the only player who heard it. So Pulse thought they were away then. You always know that's your free. Oh, Bobble ball, and it ends up back in Henry's hand. So after all that, turnover to the central Pulse. Oh, with a voice one down the sideline. Millie Lee's there to collect. Millie Lee's one rates one of her career highlights as her first win with the Central Pulse. Imagine how she'd feel if they beat the Mystics tonight. Oh, she'd be beside herself. <laughs> Off George. Lee's a very busy woman in her sixth year of her medical studies, trying to juggle everything. Yes, it's an interesting reminder, isn't it, just what some of these players do juggle in a semi-professional league, be it studies or children or jobs. Griffin certainly getting a lot of the ball. She's had as many shots as Thwaites. So they're sharing the load, which always makes it more difficult for the defenders. 
Missed it once again on the back foot, but that's a great ball finding Latu. It's trademark Mystic's lovely roll by Latu. Strong take, Griffin. Not often you see Caitlin Thwaites out of the circle. Strong rebound. And finishes off Caitlin Thwaites. 18 from 20 for Thwaites tonight. Katrina Grant. Selby Ricker having an outstanding game to Tyre so far. Maria just putting up the eight goals. It's unassuming, isn't she, Selby Rickett? Not always the first defender that people talk about, but she really plays a poor game. And she will be reveling playing with Grant in that circle. No one home. Contact. Contact. Cullen getting frustrated with Griffin now. Griffin's certainly in the game. Nice play by Griffin, firing at the Thwaites. Obstruction. Both players out. So that two-goal lead is restored. Ah, oh, yes. Great foil by two Tayet. And it's almost as though Kenneth George is begging Grant to come out, come out. And then popped it right over her head. Henry doing what she could to had a, that ball back. Had a strong game, Henry, against her old side. So again, the Mystics let the pulse off. Halfway mark, third quarter. And these two teams have gone to extra time twice in the history of this competition. Both times the Mystics winning. I think the Pulse have been to extra time seven times. Jenny won once. So their record's not great. They'll be hoping that's not the way this game will go. And they also have the record for having the only draw due to a, a roof malfunction in Perth some years ago now. But that was a memorable game for the Pulse because it was the first game they didn't lose. <laughs> Those days are over. Not sure they would have been celebrating. A totally different team now, the Central Pulse, showing their wares already. And there's Tito yeah, showing her wares. She's only missed one shot. Kite. Beautiful ball to Latu. Perhaps had to reach a bit far for it, but it was the right idea. Steady work by Latu, just making herself available time and time again. So there's something for this Mystics crowd to smile about. 34. Oh, Grant read that before it was released. These are the sorts of plays that lift teams. Can they score the pulse? <laughs> Certainly not doing anything that looks pretty. It's a typical... Oh. Oh. And they blow it. You can see Grant yelling from the back. Frustrating for a skipper way down the court at Goldkeep. Who's pulled off the intercept. She's having plenty to say. 
Oh, like a step. The crowd's starting to get into it, trying to lift their side. They look pretty flat all night, the Mystics. Now they get the lead back, the Northern Mystics, 35-34. It's the quality of the side, you know, not doing anything fancy. They're just plugging away. It's a real struggle for them tonight, but they find themselves in front. Griffin made a nice little posse for herself. And finishes. Again, to beat Selby Rickett. Yeah, and this is a wasteful opportunity. Once again, their defenders doing what they can to lift their side. So the sparks starting to fly in this game. Dale Whiffen. Try again. One there, Jolene Henry. That's a high ball. He receives. Well, they just tighten up a little bit the Mystics in defence, making that touch harder for the Pulse to penetrate. Big shot here for Thwaites. And well, Thwaites might applaud, but Griffin needs to finish. She struggles right under the post at times, does Griffin. She just needs to take a deep breath, relax. It's good to see that she is taking the shot, though. Some shooters can pass it off. She's done it again. Now, that will do your head in, surely. There are the fingernails going. And the crowd, I think, don't like the fact that the pulse had the throw in. But this is tense. She's offside there. <laughs> Umpire's caught advantage. The crowd <laughs> really getting involved. It's chaotic there. I think the umpire's getting flustered. And Thwaites lands the hard one. They do a little hand slap, and well, they might. Gee, that goal was a long time coming. At least it finally arrived. Oh, and Rasmussen had a go. Opened up for Waits. And Paula Griffin just angling back to the shooting circle. Very casual. You watch the Mystic score here. Oh, well, they proved me wrong. Selby Rickett just doing enough to get her hands up. This game is starting to ignite. Good work, Selby Rickett. It's hard when the ball's coming down that quickly. Watch Lato and Selby Rickett in that circle. Elbows, hips, everything going. Game certainly lifted in intensity. Both teams becoming a little bit more desperate now. Just over two minutes remaining in the third. Oh, oh well read, Griffin. That was a beautiful fake pass. And which way is this going? I think it's going the way of the Mystics. Uh, Grant, Grant and Griffin. Good effort, though. Two tail, probably slot this one. You put her off, Cat. <laughs> this is big for the Pulse. Strong take again, Thwaites. Took it out of Rasmussen's hands. And perhaps that's a sign of the new pulse. <laughs> Broughton looking so relieved. I'm on the verge of tears, just about. Henry steadying herself. Yeah, it's not going right for the defenders, for the Mystics. They're having a go at things. Oh. And Thwaites realising she couldn't take that ball, so that's... A let off for the Northern Mystics. Ah, oh, Selby Rickett, she's having an outstanding game, just getting better as it progresses. What a pass. Take a look at this. That'll lift you. 
Kevin Putter George, the Mystics captain, was applauding in the background. 37 all, 40 seconds on the clock, third quarter. We thought the Mystics would be better, uh, the Pulse rather would be better, but boy, this is close. Just 10 goals apiece in this quarter. That's how good the defending's been from both sides. Oh, look at that. Even the attackers are having a go. Great work, Rasmussen. Oh. Oh, there we go. That is an outstanding end to the third quarter in what is becoming an outstanding game. And can you believe it? You look to the scoreboard, it is 37 all at the end of the third quarter. Nothing in it at the Trust Stadium. 37 apiece. See the Mystics take. So Debbie Fuller saying, right, this is what you've got to do. And she's making some changes. But we'll tell you about those after the stats. No, I think there's some telling stats there. 51 attempts to the Poles, just 40 to the Mystics. So it's only shooting percentage that's keeping the Mystics in this game. Intercept 7-2. to two. The Poles defenders are doing everything they can to keep this, their team, not only in this game, but trying to drive them to win. But a number of changes being made. Rasmussen in at goal attack. Two Tyre to the bench, which is a, is a big move. Clark back on at centre. And George to wing attack. Dea Whiffen gets this final quarter underway, 37 all. And the other change for the Pulse is Bellring on at goal attack. Griffin to the bench. Griffin putting up lots of shots, but just not being able to convert. Four from eight in that last quarter. But Catherine, aren't we seeing the matchup we've all wanted to see? Jolene Henry marking Timmy Putter George. Could be telling. Could be fireworks. <laughs> Maria Tutaye on the bench, not a sight to see too often. No, really struggled to get into the game and um, got to give accolades to Selby Rickett. She certainly shut her out. But both coaches showing that netball has changed so much over the years. It's all about just putting different players on and expecting them to slot in without any adjustment time. And Jade Clark certainly well used to centre. In actual fact, it's the position I think she is strongest at. Big smile there from Grace Rasmussen. 58. Oh. General Henry sizing things up at the back. Good elevation from Charlotte Kite. On the ball. Pretty casual from Selby Rickett. Gets away with it. Big move to put Bell Ringer on at this stage of the game. Griffin, yes, went awry with her shooting, but she was certainly combining well with weights. Amber Bell Ringer still just 21. It's her third season with the Central Pulse. Oh. So we wreck it again. Good combination there with Grant. They're going to be very solid this season. And with Henry out the front, it's not a bad defensive line. So the arm wrestle continues. 39 all. Pulse get away with it. Good pressure off the line by the Mystics. 
Oh, well done. Uh, caught for obstruction there, Kite. A little bit close. Good start for Bell Ringer. Yep, solid. Under a lot of pressure. Nice interplay between Clark and Kite. Rasmussen, she's such a silky player. Really opens up the court. Maybe a big move by Fuller, but a very good one, perhaps. Time will tell. That was a member of the Silver Fern squad a couple of seasons back, and then that nasty knee injury put things on hold for Grace Rasmussen last year. Yeah. Charlotte Kite coming into it. She's a great leader of the game. George and Rasmussen, but it's about knowing each other's play. Henry a bit frustrated with Whippen there, thinking that she didn't cover. The fan is too scared to come out for the ball now, such is the pressure. Beautiful take and feed. Now, for the first time in a long time, it's the Mystics with a two-goal lead. I think Larty knowing that she just about didn't hang on to that ball. Good effort from Jay Clark. Okay. All the pressure now on the central pulse. Not sure about Whitten in centre there. Just looks a little bit tired. Playing laterally. There's opportunity there for Bell Ringer to get through. Called for obstruction. Now, tell by the way Clark is moving that she's much more comfortable in that centre position. Tipped by Sylvie Rickett. Barnage offside, goal attack. Contact. Obstruction, both players out. Callan all over Bell Ringer at the moment, and he's shutting her out. But at the same time, being picked up for it. Well done, Rasmussen. Wasn't interested in the shot. She was more concerned about Thwaites getting the rebound. She read it correctly. Mystics going sideways. They're moving a bit more freely, though, the Mystics. They look a bit more energised than their opponents. No. Yeah, Twinkle Toes Latu making sure exactly where her feet work. She had plenty of room. And suddenly the Mystics have a three-goal lead, and then they oh. just about throw it away. That was touch and go. Good effort by Kite, though. Knew that she needed to touch that ball before it went into the goal third. And did. Strong hold from Latu, but not needed. And Grant just perhaps wanting the floor. White, Tutaya looking anxiously on. Oh, 
extra time. By taking Griffin off, though, it seems as though the defenders are paying more attention to Thwaites, making it more difficult for the Pulse. And that's a big blow for the Pulse. Halfway through the final quarter. George lighting things up there, but... Great take, Selby Rickett. So oh. they're keeping their chances alive, the Pulse. But they're just at the moment unable to finish. Yes. Either a held ball or a drop ball, just something. That's the pressure, Jenny, because Swat Waits generally doesn't drop balls. But they're desperate. It took a while, but that's a big goal for the Northern Mystics. A buffer of four. Was called. Yeah, it's Waits. There seen... was talk of something of a, perhaps a little bit of a back niggle for Caitlin Thwaites during the week. And you can see the ice going on the lumbar region. Yeah, they don't want to lose her, but she doesn't look too disturbed by it. And those numbers just show how tight this game has been, and it's really only in this fourth and final quarter, 8 5, the Mystics up. Yeah, you've got to give credit to the Pulse defenders to keep the Mystics to such a low score so far. It's been a fine e effort. Leading the way is Selby Ricketts. She really shut Tutai out of the game, and she's just got so much ball in terms of deflections, tips, intercepts, having an outstanding game for her new side. But you can only be that good if you combine well with your fellow defenders, Henry and Grant, playing great support acts too. And it's very noticeable, Kath, the amount of talk in that pulse defensive circle. They're yabbering the whole time. And look at this for Thwaites. She looks pretty uncomfortable. I guess the option is for Robbie Wharton to bring Griffin back on. That goal shoot if Thwaites is unable to continue. Wharton's the super coach, but I'd bring Griffin back on at goal attack. I just don't think Bill Ringer adds as much as Griffin does. Yes, her shot was going off, but you know, she can rectify that, but she certainly was getting a lot of ball. But no, Thwaites goes back to her position. Play resumes in the fourth quarter. 45-42, the Mystics lead. And yeah, things falling their way as well now, the Mystics. Taking a while, but it looks like they're away. Debbie Fuller looks exhausted. from Charlotte Kite. We said before she was a bit short for a goal kick, but gee, she can jump. Having a fine last quarter, Kite. And she'll be wanting to prove her point, won't she? Because one thing that people have said about this Mystic side, they're pretty heavy in the defensive end. Contact, I mean heavily laden with talent. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yes, she will, Jenny. Yeah, it's about the third time she's done that this quarter. Crucial takes. Oh. And what a roll the Mystics are on now. They lead by six. Puts a little look of despondency on Robin Broughton's face. Not out of it yet, Jenny. Yeah. Over four minutes to go. We've seen a lot of new dimensions to the Pulse team. Maybe one is that characteristic of fighting back. Well, they certainly showed it earlier on in the game, and I think they scored about six goals in a row. Now, here is the change. 
Yeah, Whiffen was really struggling there. They certainly lost some zip with Milner Olsen on the bench. So that change has been made. And this being the second injury break in the same quarter, they've only got 30 seconds, and that's why it has to be snappy. So just to get you up to speed, Millie Lee's back to centre. And Harama Milner Olsen out on attack. So Selby Rickett again, turning the ball over for her team. Five goals is not a lot, just a couple of turnovers. Oh, they're lucky there, the pulse. Got to put some, up some big shots here, do the pulse. Can't afford to miss. They sent a pass to come. They've cut it to four. Oh, big top. Unlucky there, Callan. Strong take, bell ringer. Rasmussen had her hand all over that. Arms and bodies everywhere. Big play here for the Pulse. And all the time, the time is ticking. 48 45, the Mystics by three. Thwaites and Thwaites rather looking at the scoreboard. Oh. Here's a moment. And those hands of Lata are usually so sure. Yeah, it was a poor ball by Milner Olsen. Well read, Callan. And she gave it to her by using the bounce. Callan's so good off the mark. And how's that for precision? And that really was opportunity blown by the Pulse. They're going to knock off some big sides, though, this year, the Pulse. Yeah, it's good to see. Katarina Cooper missing from the team, in, out injured, but certainly was the star for the team at the pre-season cup. So she'll add a lot at wing attack. She was the talk of the town, Katarina Cooper. Good to hear Coach Broughton saying she's missing tonight really just as a precaution. She's playing it around a little bit there, George, knowing that more seconds that tick over, more chance they've got a victory. You'd have to say, have this game in the bag. But gee, it's taken them a long time. And that's worked well for the Mystics, but there's trouble here for Timmy Potter George. She's done that, but watch as she went down. This does not look good. She looks as though she's in quite a bit of pain. Oh, it Hopefully might be cramp. Just cramp. Because she put in that huge long ball to Latu. High fives all round for the Northern Mystics. She hasn't done a lot of court work, Jenny. She's got a troublesome ankle in this stage of her career. Fuller's put her on the bike and put her into the gym a little bit more than on her feet. So maybe that's the reason. And here it goes. Oh. Oh, tripped over her own feet. Well, it can happen That'll to the be best of us. Entertaining in the <laughs> post-match analysis. <laughs> you can see Debbie Fuller's. I don't think I need to lip read to tell you what Debbie Fuller might have said. Debbie Putter George, probably the last player she wants to lose. 51-46, the Mystics lead the Pulse in the last minute of this game. And what a brave fight the Central Pulse have put up. Yeah, it's good to see another competitive team in the competition. Oh, quick hands. But not quick enough to beat Kayla Cullen. Pulse finished six in the pre-season comp where all teams competed, so they'll be eyeing that up. 
for the season, I'm sure. And they want another one here at the Central Pulse. Millie Lees quickly. Look at this for three. Rachel Rasmussen and Thwaites. Nothing they can do with that one. It is a, been a very fine battle here in Auckland between the Northern Mystics and the Central Pulse. Silver Fern teammates there embrace. But what a fine battle. And the Northern Mystics, it took them until late in the final quarter to get the better of the Central Pulse. They've done it by four goals. But this certainly is a bit of a new look Central Pulse. And while the Mystics too have offered something a bit different. Outstanding shooting by Kat Latu for the Mystics. She's only missed one goal, 33 from 34. And you can see the look on some of those places, uh, faces. They've really been through a torrid competition. Katrina Grant, captain of the polls, she'll be disappointed. But they've shown some promise and they've shown some steel. And as far as the Northern Mystics go, Charlotte Kite, she'll be well pleased with her performance tonight. Came on partway through the game at wing defence. Mystics all the way, says the sign. Well, we'll have to see about that as the season plays out. But for now, a very good win for the Northern Mystics. Signs of things to come from both these sides. It's a win to the Northern Mystics, 51-47 over the Central Pulse. Round one of the ANZ champs and the local side, the Mystics, too good for the Pulse. The stats often tell a story, as they do, but I tell you what, it was very, very close for a very long time. Catherine Harvey-Williams, the goal percentage there, will always tell you what team will win in the end. Yeah, they struggled with that last year, Lavina. Their attempts are always up there, but the goal shooting percentage lets them down, and it happened again tonight. Seven more shots against a quality side like the Mystics. You really need to score up in the mid-80s if you're going to challenge for a victory, but a pretty fine performance by the Central Pulse. Do you think maybe that the Mystics underestimated the ability of the Pulse considering it was locked up for most of that match? No, I think they knew that the Pulse were a new look side, that Robin Broughton would bring a lot to the team and with the likes of Henry and Griffin and Selby Rickett etc. They have got a team that is going to be very competitive this year so I just think it was a case of the Mystics coming off a strong season last year thinking perhaps that it might happen here tonight. It didn't but you know to struggle in your first game is probably going to be a good thing for a team like the Mystics. What do you think about the coaches not afraid to spark some changes from the bench? It's not often that we see Maria Tutaya watch the final quarter of a match from the bench. No you're either going to be a hero and a villain so to actually take Maria to tie her off in the last quarter when she generally comes in and shoots some really long bombs. It's, she's a, it's a pretty big move, but you've got to give credit to Fuller to do that. She brought Rasmussen on and she shot six out of seven in that final quarter and to some degree was the difference. The first quarter, I guess, it was the Mystics leading by 16 to 11. They showed a lot of confidence in that first quarter. Looks like that they would set the standard for the match. Well, that's another dimension that we've seen from the Pulse. The Mystics generally would roll on with a lead like that, but the Poles came back at them and swung it around 16-11 in their favour. So it was a very competitive effort. The Mystics were slow out of the blocks after the quarter time and really struggled to get going until that last quarter again. OK, let's get to the results so far for round one of the ANZ champs. The Thunderbirds with a record-breaking win over the Swifts, beating them by 17 goals. They look smart out on court. There was an upset, though. The unbeaten run from the Firebirds, the defending champions, is now over after they were defeated by the Vixens. It shows there is life after Shirelle. <laughs> McMahon and the Mystics, four goals up on the Pulse. Couple of matches tomorrow night to look out for, but it all kickstarts at six o'clock tomorrow night on Sky Sport with the College Netball. We feel proud to be affiliated with this. It will be the Auckland girls and the Hamilton girls, and it will be presented to you and commentated by Ricky Jane Swinnell and Adine Wilson. Tomorrow night at seven o'clock, Netball Zone kicks off on Sky Sport at seven o'clock. We have a very special guest, Wendy Frew, who will let us know exactly what's happening in the netball world. What a fantastic match. It was this evening. So many people were looking for a very, very close game indeed. And for most of the match, they received that. On behalf of the Sky Sport production and presentation team, we'd like to say thanks. It's been really good having your company this evening. We look forward to it again tomorrow. The Magic take on the Steel. See you then.
coverage of the ANZ Championship was brought to you by ANZ.